Hey everyone, welcome back. In today's tutorial, I'll be showing you how to communicate between two Raspberry Pis or multiple Raspberry Pis even without the need for Wi-Fi or Bluetooth. So you'll be able to communicate with multiple Raspberry Pis over a distance using a technology called LoRa which is not that common and it's a very powerful communication technology that enables us to do this very seamlessly provided to us by some modules we can purchase which are also incredibly low cost so i'll be walking you through the steps of how to set that up in this tutorial with two raspberry pi pico w's and by the end of it you will have messages being sent over the distance without the need for wi-fi or bluetooth which can of course bring many benefits to your iot projects so enough being said let's jump into it laura stands for long range a wireless communication technology designed to send small amounts of data over vast distances, even up to 15 kilometers or more depending on the type of module, while using very little power and operating on unlicensed frequency bands. Unlike Wi-Fi or Bluetooth, which are short range and power hungry, LoRa is perfect for remote applications or applications where battery life is critical. And so there are many real world use cases of LoRa that includes smart agriculture, such as soil monitoring across fields, environmental monitoring such as air quality sensors in remote locations and even in disaster prone areas LoRa devices can be used to send emergency alerts or monitor environmental changes in real time so clearly LoRa has a lot of benefit it can add to our projects and i think it's a really powerful technology you should be familiar with hence why i'm making this video by the end of it we will learn how to communicate between two picos using these modules so we'll be setting up two pico devices with LoRa modules and i'll be showing you the physical setup and the code setup we need to be able to send a message between one module and the other using LoRa technology and that is without bluetooth or wi-fi so it is pretty powerful indeed if you have not already before we get into the video please be sure to like and subscribe to the channel if you have not, because I sincerely believe whether you are a tech or an advanced tech enthusiast or a beginner, this channel will have things to offer you in the future. So stick around with us, hit that subscribe button, and let's get started. Okay, so in terms of hardware connections, it's pretty simple. So we just need two Picos, as you see I have here. Now you can use two breadboards. You don't necessarily need the same one. I just had a large breadboard, so I just connected them to the same breadboard. Now they do have separate power supplies, but I'm programming both of them from the same computer. Just have some way to, to program them or keep them on. And I'm just using one computer to do that. I have a tutorial on how to program two Pico W's on the same computer in Thani. I'll link that right here. And that's the methodology I'm using. I'm able to program on two Picos with the same computer. So these wires are connected to my same MacBook. And of course we need two lower modules. You see those are in the back there, some jumper wires. So we need four jumper wires per, per lower module. I'm using male to male jumper wires. And because these things use serial communication, we are going to connect two of the, the wires in the center there. So one of them is the, is this is the TX pin. So the TX pin from the lower module goes to the RX on the Pico. And then the RX pin from the lower module goes to the TX pin on the Pico. This is the top pin here. And then we have a power pin, which goes, or we have a ground pin in yellow, which goes to the ground pin on the Pico. And then we have a power pin for the LoRa which goes to the power pin on the Pico and one of the pins on the LoRa is not used. We're not gonna talk about that. And same thing for the other module, okay? So now that we have those connections, and of course there's more detail about how these connections are made on my blog link down below. So if you're still confused or this is not clear to you, it might not be because there's a lot of wires going around. So go ahead and visit that link. It's a lot more clear there and you'll see the exact connections you need for each, for each, for each module. They are the same, but you'll see the exact connections you need to to make a connection to the lower module via serial communication and that will be very clear and now that we have that let's jump into the code side of things to show the sender code and the receiver code so we'll be coding each raspberry pi pico w separately and we'll be talking about that next okay so jumping into the code for my first pico or pico w i am using micropython and i am in thani to write this first program you go ahead and just copy the code as we go along or get it from the description down below in the blog pretty much what this code is doing we'll just go over it at a high level so i will explain it we are just importing some libraries we're initial we're initializing uart so that is serial communication with the device as we discussed we use those two serial pins to initiate that and then in this code, if we go all the way to the bottom here, we're just calling this main function first. So in this main function, first of all, we're, we have to initialize the module. So we have just some commands we send via, 
via UART communication. So we send some serial commands to the device. First one is AT, so we just check the device. And then we just set some settings on the lower modules. So we set some things such as the address, the network ID, the, the frequency band, and then we just initialize it. And that's, that's something important to do when we are working with lower modules is you do have to initialize them in terms of their network properties. So we do that first. Then after we initialize it, we are able to send messages. So very seamless. And so we just go to this send message function. So the, the send message we're going to send is going to be hello receiver. And then we are just going to send the command. So when we do send the command, we just have to type in the length of the message and the message or input the length of the message and the message. And then we're just going to call that send command function. So anytime you see send command, it's sending a, a serial command to the lower module. So we haven't sent the message yet. So just wait till we get to that function there. And in this function, pretty much what we're doing is we are doing some byte conversions. And then once we do all of that processing in terms of the, the bytes, we we write to serial communication. So we, we tell it which message essentially we want to, to send. And then we terminate it with these characters here. And we get a response after we send a command to the lower module. And then we just print that response. And we just do this repeatedly every five seconds. So we send hello receiver every five seconds. So very simple program to send a very simple message with the lower module. And it, it allows us to do it very seamlessly thanks to UART communication and the built-in functionality within the module itself. Okay, so this is the sender code. We're not going to run it yet. Let's talk about the receiver code next that is able to receive these modules and parse them. Okay, so jumping into the code on our other device, I just opened another instance of Thani. I'm connected, and this is the code we'll be writing. And the code is somewhat similar. So initial, initially, we just import those modules. We initiate UART communication on the same pins. And of course, this is the receiver code, by the way. So just keep that in mind. This is what's receiving the message from the other Pico W's LoRa module. And then down in this code, we have this main function. And one thing I, I want you to keep in mind is there's a bunch of comments and inline comments as well in, and doc strings that help you understand this code on your own. So I left a bunch of stuff here for you to read because, frankly, there's a lot of details here that would take much more time than we need to go over. But I'm just going to explain it at a high level. So we just initialize the lower module as we did in the previous segment on the other Raspberry Pi Pico W, same, same function essentially, but we're just using a different address in this case. And then after we initialize it, we're just going to listen for messages. So this is different functionality because instead of sending messages, we're going to receive them. So we're, we're, we just call this listen for messages. And what happens is if the device receives a message on that respective network that it's looking for, what it's going to what it's going to do is it's going to send messages via serial communication to our Raspberry Pi Pico W. And then we just have a, a bunch of parsing here, essentially, when we receive a message. And so this is all this code. It looks very intimidating, especially if you are a beginner. But pretty much what that code allows us to do, it, it converts those bytes we're receiving over serial communication to a form that we can print on the screen. And it, and it looks readable to us because there's a lot coming in in that message. But the main things we want to look for in that message is we're receiving an address the length of the message, the message itself, and we're, we're receiving properties called the RSSI and the SNR, which I have details here, and that pertains to signal strength, essentially, and the clarity of the signal. I have some, I have a, I have a long comment here. You can delete these. You don't need these comments, but that's just for your own clarity's sake, and this is what is receiving the message, and it'll continue to receive messages until we exit the code. So now that we have that, let's go ahead and run the sender here. So we're just going to go ahead and run the sender. So you see that the response of the device is OK. Now that that is OK, we can go ahead and open the receiver and run that as well. So if it's connected and it's fine, we also receive OK. So now it's waiting for messages. And it looks like it got that message. So everything is successful. So you could see there in the shell, it said receive message from address one, which is the address we define. And that message is hello receiver. So it looks like we were able to send messages between two lower modules successfully and very seamlessly using this, this device here, which enables long range communication. Very nice and very seamless as you just saw. Okay, so there you have it. We were able to send messages between two devices using LoRa. You saw how incredibly seamless it was to do that. And I hope you learned something new and I hope you got it working yourself. Of course, you can extend the functionality we went over in this code to your own applications, or you could just keep this in mind and just add it to your IoT toolkits because I think it's incredibly powerful to be able to send messages over a long distance so easily without, without, without Wi-Fi or Bluetooth, which a lot of the times is our go-to thought. We want to use Wi-Fi or Bluetooth 
or some other signal. And a lot of people don't know about these lower modules. So if you learned something new, got it working, please consider liking, commenting, or subscribing to the channel. That would mean a lot to us to allow us to continue making more engaging content for you because really it's your support that allows me and Shilatech to continue thriving and making more awesome tutorials for you. If you have any questions, let me know in the comment section down below, or if you enjoyed the video as well, please let us know. Stay tuned and I will see you guys in the next tutorial.